Hello, dear viewers. Welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I am a little bit brain dead, but we're going to give this a shot anyway and hope that I don't make too many mistakes here. I've been uh, studying hard for the bar exam, and it's been, uh, been using up a lot of my mental resources. But I think we can at least do vaults four. I think I am capable of that. Uh, what are we working with here? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Didn't we have bolt of magma? Ah, we forgot bolt of magma. That's right, I was annoyed with it because it wasn't doing damage to things, and so I forgot it. <laughs> so, we have, looks like, ten spell levels to play around with here. Uh, huh. So, I don't like the, the demon summoning spells. I, I mean, they're, they're sort of high risk, high reward. They're very strong for their spell levels. I mean, on average, they're going to do more good for you than another summoning spell of the same quality, but there's a chance each time you summon a demon that it will be hostile to you. And that would be bad enough as it is, you know, just adding to your problems instead of uh, helping you out. But on top of that, it's, I mean, it's not immediately obvious that it's hostile. So unless you're playing very slowly and carefully, you might just sort of walk around for a few turns with a hostile demon smashing you in the face and you're like what's hitting me what's hitting me and it's the demon that you summoned so i'm not a fan of them i it just that's that seems like an unnecessary var variable to throw into the equation i i guess if you're going sort of a straight summoner build it might be nice to have uh, because again they are strong but okay so Let's see, we have access to Shatter, but we won't be able to cast it for another 10 levels of Earth Magic or so. So there's no reason for us to memorize it right now. We will easily have 9 spell levels by the time we train Earth Magic to the point where we can use it, if we even want to do that. Because another option we have is training up Summoning uh, to about the same, you know, level 20, 21-ish. Uh, I'm, I'm allowing for 20, 21 because... We have a Ring of Wizardry, which is good, but we have 11 Encumbrance Fire Dragon Armor, which is bad. I mean, it's, it's great armor, but it makes it harder for us to cast spells. And we also have this crazy uh, wild magic mutation that we got. It was a, a beneficial mutation, technically, uh, but it does make our spells somewhat harder to cast. And the higher the spell level, the more difficult it is to cast. What have we been training? Um, hmm... Oh, that's right. We were trying to get shields up to level 15, I think, so that we could use normal-sized shields without it getting in the way of our spellcasting. And we wanted to get maces and flails to 16, so our morning star, artifact morning star, I think, that we found. Yeah, this morning star uh, hits minimum delay. Right now, let's see what it's at. 0.8? Okay. So the, the way that um, melee combat works, and soon in point one five, uh, when that's released, I mean, you could play it right now, but when it's released for download, when it's stable, um, it'll work the same way for ranged attacks. Currently, it's very complicated. Ranged is a mess. But um, every two skill levels reduces your delay by one-tenth of a turn. So it's, just, it's really easy to calculate. And I'm glad that they're switching ranged over. That's a very good choice on their part, I think. It might make it a little too strong or a little too weak. I don't know how the balance issues work. And you may hear me in a couple of months complaining about them. But at least for, you know, user and simplicity, it's it's really nice. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to trickle points into stealth for sure. I feel, I just feel like we're spreading ourselves a little thin here. I think what I may do is let fighting and spellcasting each hit the next rounded level. So level 17 for fighting, level 15 for spellcasting. And then turn them off for a little while until we get maces and flails and shields up a little higher. To, to the point where we want to get them. Because so, then we can just turn them off and forget about them basically forever. 
I, I mean, I've always known that training up Shields higher is, is was probably in the cards for us, because Buckler's... I mean, the chance of us finding an artifact Buckler is, you know, half as much as the chance of us finding an artifact Shield or Buckler. Okay. These are the other random weapons that we found that we didn't bother to train up. Uh, what else are we working with? We have a bunch of random wands, some food. Uh, we have plenty of Karma food on us, so we don't need to deal with that. Some staves. We're carrying around this wand of explosive, whatever, explosive bolt, which seems like it could be good. So I'm going to give it a shot. But I'm not expecting anything dramatic. Uh, our rings, I, th I don't know if I did this on camera or not, but I did decide on keeping on our cool ring of wizardry and resist cold. Resist elect po electric and poison are irrelevant for us. And wearing a ring of sea invisible, but we also are carrying around uh, this ring of... Uh, it's fire, resist negative energy, and accuracy plus five. So it reduces our cold resistance by one pip, increases our fire resistance by one pip, and buffs up our fire magic spells. Uh, increases their spell power. So that's an argument for memorizing a fire magic spell and training fire magic. I'm kind of tempted to memorize Bolt of Fire, actually. It's not perfect for us yet. I mean, it's at 11% failure rate, which is far more than you want for an offensive spell, for a spell that you're going to be casting more than, you know, just once or twice, or that you're going to be casting in the middle of combat. I mean, a 10% failure rate seems like it's about a 30% failure rate. I, I know that it's still just, you know, straight up 10, 11 percent, but you <laughs> selection bias. You you notice the times that you fail. Um, I think that's good. Like we could memorize statue form. That is an interesting option that we may consider sort of for the extended end game. Once once we run into a lot of torment, uh, statue form gives you additional resistance to it. On on top of the, I think it's on top of the gargoyle's natural resistance. Regardless, it does make us really tanky as far as physical damage goes. Uh, and it increases our melee damage. So we'll, we'll consider that. I don't like the slow effect, especially when it, we already have a tough time moving around. So, yeah. I think I think what we'll do is we'll memorize Bolt of Fire. Because it's, it's a strong spell no matter what. Um, we're not too concerned about things that are resistant to fire, because we do have Iron Shot still. So if we run into a fire giant, we'll just... We'll obviously just, you know blast him down with iron shot uh and we're i mean geez we are already maximally resistant to fire oh our morning star gives us resist fire that's pretty cool <laughs> oh man so the ring of fire yeah this this ring of fire is is mm, i don't know it it's cool it's a good ring and i'm glad to have it uh it's just not optimized for us then again, equipment rarely is. I've had a couple of runs where it feels like everything I've found was hand-tailored for my enjoyment, but usually those are the runs that I get overconfident and, you know, try and attack a gold dragon and an ancient lich at the same time. That that kind of run. <laughs> that's that's not one that I recorded. That was... Uh, um, I think that was the... The most successful run I had had prior to my first ascension, my first victory. Uh, I, it was Volts 5, and I cleared out the main assault and then just rounded a corner and saw a gold dragon and an ancient lich and decided to blitz him. Very poor choice. <laughs> we could do the Hall of Blades. I guess we should. A Death Drake? I'm not that familiar with Death Drakes. Miasma breath. Ooh, that's not good. Oh wait, yeah, it is. We're <laughs> we're immune to rotting. Never mind. <laughs> immune. Yeah, awesome. I hate rot. It's. Oh, I see. It's a shapeshifter. All right. Um, like uh, when I say I hate rot, I mean it, it's not that I don't think it should be in the game. It's it's a good. It's a good bad thing, if that makes sense. Uh, it's a cool thing that you have to watch out for and deal with, you know, expend resources to cure, that sort of thing. Um, 
But it just feels so bad to see your hit points, you know, sucked away from you, your flesh falling off. But there's there's some really interesting sort of rot effects in the game, and I, I, I think that it would be a lot harder to balance some um, races without it. Like, mummies instead of... In fact, I think most undead, instead of mutations, you, you suffer rotting, which is cool. Like, it... it it's kind of a benefit and kind of a, a detriment. I don't know. Glowing claymore and a rune dire flail. Let's uh, use some of our spell casting here. Yeah, our, our stealth is going to train up super fast because of this manual. I, I generally, generally when I find a manual, I immediately start training that. Um, let's just eat one of these bread rations. Um, Dire flails are, are worthless. They are one of the worst weapons, in my opinion. It, you know, they're two-handed, but their damage is only 13. That's only you know three more than a flail. It's the same as a morning star. It's less than an evening star. I mean, its minimum delay is a little bit faster than a morning star, but it's, I don't know, they're just, they're bad. It's not worth giving up a shield to use a dire flail, unless you find an artifact really early on. Uh, and I completely lost my train of thought. From what I was talking about before. I don't know. Rotting's cool, yada yada. Undead. I haven't played a whole lot with the undead races, just because they're significantly different. They have some really cool strengths and weaknesses. Um, like vampires, for example, have uh, different levels of satiation. They don't deal with hunger in the same way. They become more or less full of blood and have very different stats based on how full you are, basically. So so managing your hunger becomes a lot more interesting, adds a cool variable to the game, and it, it makes them very strong spellcasters in a way because um, you don't have that hunger penalty. Uh, Lajatang is sort of the melee bashing version of a staff. It's a it's a double bladed staff. It's it's cool. I've never actually gone staves with a character. It it they're just I don't know. I I, ha, I, I don't know why. I couldn't tell you. I, I think maybe because they're two handed and I like shields in general. I oh why is there a Tengu Reaver here? Yikes! Oh, that's a scary enemy actually. Huh. So regardless, yeah, we know it has this Gondarin's Battle Sphere. Obviously, it's conjured one. So we're dealing with Lightning Bolt, Bolt of Magma, or Venom Bolt. So Lightning and Cold, or Fire, or Poison. Hopefully we get Book 3, and he can't really do much to us. Though the Battle Sphere is going to hurt regardless. Let's get some allies. Ugh, Fire. Gross. I hate it. Oh, cool. We summon, uh... Oh, Sayobo. Darn. Wow, this might be the end of the run for us. Oh, man. Gosh, this guy is really, really dangerous. We're going to immediately stop flying, because Airstrike does uh, massive damage to you if you're flying. Okay, what else can we do? Yeah, this guy is always accompanied by several Tengu Reavers who are powerful conjurers in their own right, and they're strong in melee combat. They're, they're high damage. They're, they're glass cannons, basically. They, they don't, it doesn't take much to kill them, but you can't ever get to them because they just blast you down from afar. And so Yobo is the king of all of them. Uh, yeah, he's just... Oof. And he's deflecting missiles. Disgusting. Guess let's summon some guys. Ugh. What do we even have that can deal with this? A 
they're out of... Okay, this one is at least within range of our iron shot, but we're going to run out of mana a long time before they're dead. And of course, you know, they're burning through our scrolls, which is obnoxious. Ooh, we could read this scroll of fear. Let's try that. Well, we got one of the Reavers. Oh, but then our summoned flail snaps him out of it. Well, this one we can maybe kill. Fortunately, we have resist electricity, so we're not just instantly dead. And we have good fire resistance. In fact, we have max fire resistance, so this Reaver isn't going to, you know, instantly kill us either. Okay, good. We got one of them. This is one of those times where I regret not having trained invocations up to the point from where Step from Time is reliable, but I mean, no use crying over it. We made our bed, we'll sleep in it. Hmm. We don't have a potion of magic, though that would be my first choice for this situation. Um, hmm. Hmm. We can blink and hope that it takes us out of his line of sight and read a scroll of teleport and hope to teleport near the stairs. That sounds like too many ifs. How resistant is he to hostile enchantments? Extremely resistant, yeah, that's what I thought. But later, I mean, this is the reason why I never ever go hexes, is because they're pretty useless by this point in the game. I mean, maybe every once in a while you'll get a success off, but the four spells that you cast that failed before it don't make up for it. Hmm. Okay, so... Man. We can use Temporal Distortion, which may be our best bet. With luck, that will put him standing next to us and we can then bash him down with our Morning Star, so that he doesn't just stand there and blast us with his various spells and summon a bunch of air elementals between us and whatnot. I think that's our best bet. Because uh, we only have enough mana for two blinks anyway. Even, even were it reliable, I would not want to use that option. Because we'd have to, like, blink towards him. I mean... What we could do is wear our Ring of Teleport control, flip a coin on the 50-50 chance that we succeed in evoking it, then use Blink, and that would let us control the Blink to get next to him. That would take, uh, well, at the bare minimum, three turns. Yeah, let's use Temporal Distortion. We're kind of putting all our eggs in one basket, but yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to read this scroll of fog. Which hopefully blocks line of sight. Well, at least that Tengu Reaver is a poison reaver. Let's drink a potion of agility. Uh, might. Agility might. Go agility and might. Let's let's spend a turn on both. We're not taking damage very rapidly, so I, I may I may actually be more scared than I need to be in this situation. But I I have died to Suyobo before. Um, attacking the Reaver a couple of times so that we get him poisoned, you know, incremental damage. Ha, got him. All right. Now we just have to survive. Whew. Good. That was scary. It's really lucky that that Reaver was poisoned and not cold. I mean, we, we have some resistance to cold, but I think if we'd had a cold Reaver blasting us repeatedly, we would have fared far worse in that exchange. I'm really glad we survived that. That's that's a good sign of our strength, actually. We really didn't even take damage that fight. I think our deflect missiles did a lot of work.
Mm. Maybe not. I think I think maybe we just we had some good evasion. Yeah, there are a couple deflections in there. Yeah. I, our evasion is really coming through for us. I'm not sure why it's 21 now instead of 22. Huh. Why is that? Oh, right, yes. We removed the ring of dexterity plus 5 in favor of the ring of sea invisible. Uh, it's That's important enough at this point of the game that it's really worth keeping on all the time, more or less. Like it, Situationally, we can switch to another ring, but I don't ever want to be in a situation where um, where there's something invisible hitting us and we have to spend a turn switching to the ring of sea invisible in order to uh, be able to attack it. That, that just seems... It's, I would much rather do it the other way around. Like, it's... Yeah. Maybe maybe that's incorrect, but why? Oh, right. We can start flying again, which I don't know why our potions of flight are turned on. That seems seems like those are completely unnecessary. Oh, well, I don't know why it's oh, it was just outlined in green for no particular reason. Okay, so the hollow blades was a lot more exciting than it normally is, but you'll notice like there was nothing in there that we really cared to use. No morning stars or evening stars or anything. It's just, Hollow Blades is just bad, and they're removing it, and I'm glad. There, I said it. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, here's some orcs. This morning star is doing really well for us. Venom does drop off late game, but for now it's still useful. I mean, demons, by and large, are immune to poison. Not all of them, and... I mean, not some of the strongest ones, even, I don't believe are... It's not a universal thing. But, oh, yeah, I was going to train up fire magic a little bit, wasn't I? Uh, yeah, let's turn off fighting. It's level 17. Let's turn on fire magic. Even at just 14% of our experience, it'll increase rather rapidly since it's at such a low level. And, yeah, we still have Deflect Missiles going. That's good. Let's turn on our Aura of Abjuration. There are a lot of demons there, and I'd rather not have to deal with them. They can just... I mean, they can do things to us from afar that uh, we wouldn't like. <laughs> Sorry, I... I... Back in middle school, many, many years ago, I once threatened someone that if they didn't stop what they were doing, I would do something to them that they wouldn't like. It was uh, widely regarded by my friends as the least intimidating threat that they had ever heard. <laughs> what? Ugh. I didn't think that the Storm Dragon Simulacrum would be much of a problem, but then it goes and shatters one of our potions. It's going to be really nice to get rid of that feature as well. 0.15. No more item destruction. I mean, we have a Cloak of Preservation that I'm kind of carrying around for no good reason. That Crystal Statue is going to be annoying. Crystal Guardian, rather. Yeah. Immune to most magic. These guys are just really hard for casters to deal with. Fortunately, we have um, Iron Shot. Boom. That's one really good reason to have one of those spells that uh, has irresistible damage. Uh, what? Oh no, we blundered into a Zot Trap and we're cast into the Abyss. Blah! <laughs> Oh dear. Hmm. Shabriado slowing down the madness of this place is nice, though. Otherwise, it would be fairly fatal, I think. Oh, hey! Huh. Shortest abyss trip ever. 
At some point, we will come back to the Abyss to get the Abyssal Rune of Zot. But I want to prepare for that. I, you know, I think we could do it now, actually, to be honest. I think we're strong enough. But, I don't know, I'm just not in the right minds for the Abyss right now. It's a lot of wandering around aimlessly. And here, I'm kind of just running in blind because I think we're strong enough at this point that we can sort of do that. Ugh, oh, shucks. I was hoping to get to that guy before he did that. Oh, good grief. What did he summon? Zatahwa, which is a really strong fire dragon, and Menace. There once was a human priest named Menace. He preached to orcs about laws and mercy, and they weren't happy with it. So they cut out his tongue. Ah! Oh. And then he's an angel. But he has difficulty speaking, so... Uh, gross. Wow, I expected that Convoker to summon some Yaktars or something, not... These guys. Huh. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is use an ability that we actually haven't used yet, which is this Bend Time ability. What? How did we rebuke the Yaktar? Is that different from what it used to be? Attempts to slow down it, yeah? I did use Ben Time, didn't I? Huh. Weird. I just don't know how we managed to kill it. Oh, I think we poisoned it, that's why. Okay. And, yeah, only the Yaktar. Alright, so let's try slouching now. Not our most successful gambit. Okay. This is a, an extremely dangerous situation. We can't read a scroll of teleportation because we haven't explored enough of the level. It would drop us into a situation potentially worse than the, the one we're in right now, though that's a little hard to imagine. Uh, huh. Well, at least we're not a demon spawn. I'm thankful for that. Hmm. Hmm. Well. So Slouch was... Looks like about a fifth of the hit points of all the things we really want to kill. And I, I mean, we could just slouch four more times or whatever, but one that would probably drop our piety below the threshold for max benefits. And I don't want our stats to be going down in the middle of this fight. That seems like a poor choice. Let's cast phase shift. Calls down the wrath of Zin. Zin did not seem to, oh, we managed to resist. That's good. The Actar hit us with a Morning Star. All right, I think our first point of order is actually to kill the Convoker because he can cast Might on all these other things. And while we stand a chance of winning this fight, as is, we would not stand a chance if they all were mighted up. We would assuredly die. Let's try hitting Menace. Did that do anything? I completely missed him. Hmm. I, I kind of want to try melee combat here. Uh, if I can. Okay, he trampled us out of the sort of danger zone of being surrounded by everybody, which is actually a benefit, even though it was damaging. Okay. We are uh, surviving this damage fairly well. OK, 
Okay, we're silenced. That's actually fine because we have a number of resources. Let's go ahead and quaff this potion of heal wounds. I'm pretty sure Zatahwa is doing the most damage to us. Um, so I'm trying to go for him first here. Now we're sealed in with all these baddies. Yeah. Can we use a Wand of Heal Wounds while we're silenced? We need to find that out right away. Yes, we can. Good. Okay. So we very, very well may survive this fight then, because we are apparently strong enough defensively to survive four strong enemies beating on us all at the same time. Though that hit with the Battle Axe is not awesome. And we're doing reasonable damage here, which is good. Boom. All right, got Zatahwa. Okay, who to kill next? Hmm. The, the reason why I'm not focusing on Menace yet is because it seems that he's got some pretty hefty defensive stats. And a Falchion of Holy Wrath isn't going to do all that much damage to us. We're not following a Chaotic God. We're not a Demon Spawn or an Undead. So it's relatively low base damage. It's the lowest damage long blade. I believe it's base damage 8 or 9. I want to say 8. Whereas this Vault Warden with a Battle Axe of base damage, I think 14. And it's glowing. I don't know what brand it is. So it could be heavily enchanted. Yeah, I've talked myself into killing this Vault Warden. Oh good, silence is gone. Oh, wait. Nope, not yet. There we go. Okay, good. We poisoned him. Let's see... Uh, Iron Shot misses... Let's just kill this warden. Boom. Gotcha. Paul Sentinel blows a signal horn. Ooh. Let's heal up again. Oh, good. Good, good. Poison finished him off. This mace is... <laughs> the venom on this mace is doing work. Puncture Menace, but do no visible damage. There we go. Hmm. Suppose maybe we should have cast some more spells before we were silenced again. I ought to have anticipated him doing that, because now, at the very least, we should have refreshed our phase shift. It's better to heal early rather than late. Uh, if you know you're going to be taking more damage. Obviously, you shouldn't waste consumables when you don't have to. But... Oh, gosh. Okay, good. We got a nice, strong hit on him there. For a minute, I was afraid that we wouldn't even be able to do enough damage to kill him, but our... <laughs> the fact that we're worshipping Chabriados, doing work, drinks a potion and is healed. I'm glad that we resisted Zin's Wrath every time he's used it. That's really good. I don't recall exactly what Zin's Wrath does, but it's not fun, regardless. I know the Wrath of the Shining One is just a bunch of damage. Big, hefty smite. Zin might be the same. Got him. Ha! And then this Yaktar is just popcorn. Awesome. That was great. We used some resources, but that's fine. I mean, we have like seven or eight scrolls of recharging for our wand. And I think aside from that, we I mean, we drank a potion of healing, which is 
Potion of Heal Wounds, which is fine because we have the wand and we, you know, freed up an inventory space. So thanks, Menace. Sometimes the Tahua will leave a hide behind, but don't let it fool you. It's not any different from other fire dragon hides. Not even bothering to check out the Glowing Great Mace. At this point, we're committed to the uh, one hand plus shields route. How's our Bolt of Fire coming along? 8%? Okay, yeah. We've already reduced the difficulty by 3% just from one level in Fire Magic, and it's only getting a little bit of experience trickled into it anyway. So we're getting there. This, this manual of stealth is really cool. Uh, the reason why stealth is useful, even for characters that want to wade in and start bashing, is because it it gives you sort of a grace period when you notice an enemy. There's a chance that it won't notice you back, and so you can back away and... I mean, you can pick your battles really easily. And especially since we're following Chabriados, and it's <laughs> tough to back away. Um, ooh, a flayed ghost. Yeah, see, you know, we have six levels in stealth. That's probably why this flayed ghost is still asleep instead of immediately waking up and coming after us. So we could just close that door and go around. <laughs> a flayed ghost by itself is not dangerous. It has a tough time killing you. A flayed ghost with even one other enemy is a potentially lethal threat. They temporarily, like, they flay the flesh from your bones and temporarily remove massive chunks of your hit points, like a quarter of your hit points at a time. Or more, maybe even a third. It's a lot. And I don't even know if it shares a resistance type with Torment. It might be a completely different effect. But as soon as you kill the Flayed Ghost, you regain all of that health, which is nice. Or if you, you know, run away from it and wait for a sufficient period of time, you'll regain all of it instantly instead of having to expend all of the turns recovering. It's this wand. A wand of lightning. Well, I'm glad we backed off instead of testing it there. So we open the door, it creaks loudly. Yeah, sound is one of the more difficult things in Crawl to really master. I certainly haven't mastered it myself. I... Uh, Frost Giant with a Battle Axe of Freezing. Do we have another source of Resist Cold? We obviously can't take off our Fire Dragon armor and get resistance that way. We might drink that potion of resistance if things get too hairy. Let's try casting a Bolt of Fire. That seemed to do reasonably well. Yeah, and the Bolt of Fire, its range is longer than the Bolt of Magma. That's, that's the big thing there. Um, the Bolt of Magma just seemed strictly worse than our iron shot. It wasn't doing really much damage at all, it seemed, and it couldn't reach things that our iron shot can't, and our iron shot is really strong. Yeah, see, we couldn't iron shot this guy, but we can bolt of fire him, and I think it's worth the miscast to try and nuke him down before he reaches us. Yeah, that battle axe of freezing would have done a lot of damage. Like Fire giants and frost giants are annoying when they're bolting you or fireballing you or whatever from a distance, they are lethal when they're in melee range. They just have tremendous amounts of strength, and they generally are wielding battle axes, which are uh, pretty high base damage. 15, yeah, very high base damage. So you can, you can generally expect... I mean, even assuming that it's not enchanted beyond plus zero, plus zero... The fact that it's a freezing brand means that you're going to be taking... Let's say you have a pip of cold resistance, so you're taking um, about 30% less cold damage. Uh, let's say you're taking a bare minimum of 20 damage per hit. Pre-reduction. You know, pre Max damage, like, 60 or 70 easily. Same thing with, with Fire Giants and, you know, this great sword. I'm really not sure. Maybe you can't inspect things. I don't know. That's one command that I haven't figured out how to do strictly on the keyboard yet. 
is examine things that are under other things. Yeah, great swords have a base damage 16. They're just, they just wield these giant two-handed weapons that'll bash you down. Yeah, see, that guy didn't even notice us, so we can kind of get to a little bit better of an angle here. I think Iron Shot is fairly quiet. Hmm. How do we... How do we check our spells? Uh, huh. Not sure. Does it say somewhere and I'm just not seeing it? No? I don't know. Anyway, I, I don't think it's too terribly loud. It's louder than, say, magic dart or something. Ge generally speaking, the more powerful the spell, the louder it is. Which makes sense partly because, you know, if you're shooting things around that explode and catch things on fire and there are giant bolts of lightning, like, yeah, yeah, of course those things are loud, you know? And I think it's also a balanced thing, so you can't be super stealthy and virtually invincible. Yeah, this Bolt of Fire already impresses me a lot more than the Bolt of Magma did. And we haven't even reached, you know, maximum capability with it by any means. We still have an 8% failure rate, which is more than I'd like. Higher than I'd like, rather. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at that range. That's ah, pretty nice range. It is a point of mana more expensive than Bolt of Magma was, but for virtually infinite more applicability. Let's use this Wand of Lightning a few times. Um, uh, we don't... There aren't that many situations where we're going to say, Oh, man, I wish I'd saved that Wand of Lightning... And it softens these guys up a little bit to make sure we don't take any damage. Since there are going to be more guys approaching us and we don't know... Oh, jeez. A lot more guys approaching us now that we have the Sentinel's Mark. Ooh, and that Flayed Ghost. Priority number one is killing it. Okay, good. It didn't manage to flay us. We'll eat the Vault Warden. Venom doing more work for us. Just kind of interspersing Iron Shot with hits from our mace here. Fire Magic level 2, Bolt of Fire, yeah. Basically every two levels, your spell percentage will increase. Because this is a two-school spell, it's Conjuration and Fire. So you have to increase one of the schools by two levels to see the same uh, benefit as one level of increase in a single school spell. That's one of the reasons why Shatter and Tornado are cool, is because they require no skill in Conjurations to be effective. They only require Earth and Air Magic, respectively. Whereas Firestorm and Glaciate are Conjuration slash Fire or Ice, respectively. Ooh, an antique weapon shop. Do you have a treasure for me? Nope. I mean, that Artifact Bastard Sword would be awesome for another character, but we can't use it. Same thing with that Battle Axe. The Scimitar, meh. It's probably okay. I keep swearing that I'm going to do a Long Blades character at some point. I think I might even have done one recently. I, it's just, you know, it, of course you are going to see more artifacts of weapon types that you don't use than weapon types that you do, because you're using one of, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. I mean, six not counting ranged weapons. Uh, you know, six melee types that that total, so you have a five out of six chance to find something that isn't useful to you. Uh, that's why I'm really excited for the next patch, 
I mean, if you haven't been able to tell from this and previous videos, I am just super excited for 0.15. I think they're making a lot of neat changes. Frederick. What is Frederick? Hmm. It's developed by a mage who wears a gold-rimmed monocle and seeks a suitable and worthy opponent. You likely do not fit the bill. What's his quote? Oh, yeah, I've seen this guy before. I remember the Mark Twain quote. Quotation, if you're one of those people that gets upset when someone uses quote in place of quotation. I personally believe that's a, a colloquialism that... Uh, is acceptable in our society. Iron Shot doing work. We have a good amount of mana now. I mean, spellcasting at 15 is nice. Maces and Flails are getting their shields. Getting there a little more slowly. Eventually this manual will... I mean, we're not leaving on stealth for the rest of the game just because we have a manual. The manual will eventually run out after a certain, um, uh, certain quantity of gained experience. Nice. Yeah, see, now that we have some more points into stealth, we can start actually approaching these monsters and get into blasty range, rather than, you know, they notice us as soon as we enter line of sight, and then we have to sort of stand around twiddling our thumbs for a couple of turns while they get closer. That, or take a step forward and risk two turns at a time. We're very rarely going to be actually able to actually reach monsters. You have to have a quite a high spell level for that to... skill level, rather, to... Um, for that to work nowadays. We're just kind of spamming our spells here. I'm not too concerned about this situation. We do have a Sentinel's Mark on us, which is kind of annoying, but, I mean, we've already dealt with Menace and Zatahwa. Like, what else is going to threaten us? I'll take the gamble that there aren't three deadly uniques on this level. Of course, that's how you die and crawl. <laughs> In a just world, I would be punished for that statement immediately. Though I'm not sure what individual unique in the vaults could kill us one-on-one. -on -one. In conjunction with other things, there are a number of very scary critters. But, I mean, we have solid resistances all around. Cold is a little low, but it's also less common than the than, than fire and negative energy, and those are both solid. And we're immune to poison, so... Uh, let's... We don't have any scrolls of... Oh, yeah, we do have scrolls of identify. Okay, good. So we can check out this ring. Magical power. Meh. Not exciting. Let's quantify the Wand of Digging. Wow, a three for... Yeah, it's this Wand of Lightning, too. I don't really care all that much about our wands, barring our Wand of Healing. Because we're not an Evocations character. Evocations are, are fun. It's really cool. It's, it's a really cool style of play. Because it, get, it grants you access to a, a wide variety of tools. Though I do not recommend... Yeah, see, that guy didn't notice this until we were right up on top of him. I do not recommend the Artificer background particularly. It, 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 it's fine, I suppose. It just it starts you off with a wand of random effects, which I think is worse than useless. I mean, it... it I view it as having a 5% chance on each use of killing you. It's it's not that dramatic, obviously, but... Um, I don't know, it's just way, way, way too variable for my taste. kind of forgot that we can summon things. That's, that's one of my problems um, with this game. Uh, it's not a problem that I have with this game, it's one of my... Uh, hurdles that I'm trying to overcome is is being more conscious of all of my options in a given circumstance when it comes to spellcasting. I I often forget about spells 
a lot of spells. I mean, when was the last time we cast Stone Skin? Granted, it's not super strong, but... I don't know. There are a lot of situations where we could have used it. Regeneration is the same thing. I forgot about Shadow Creatures in that entire fight with Menace and Zatahua, and that really could have helped out there. No question. I mean, we came out all right, but... Or the... the I guess the battle with Sayoba, we did use Shadow Creatures, and they weren't great. Stupid flails and whatnot. Ooh, I forgot that the troll shamans can do that. Ouch. I mean, granted, it was only 18 damage this time, but um, yeah, we are vulnerable to earth magic. That's uh, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, this bolt of fire is pretty sweet. Problem solved. This, Mace, this Morning Star is doing us really well as, as well. Yeah, we, I, we've got a, a, a solid setup. We should be fine through the end game. I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll need more experience and probably want a little more equipment, but we're on track to get to the Orb of Zot. And we should be able to continue on beyond that. My, my goal for this guy is to take on a ziggurat. I think we can do it. Let's cast Deflect Missiles. One of these years I'll raise charms a little bit more. Maybe we'll find a potion of experience and I'll dump it all into air magic. Still not an efficient use of the potion, but it's less frustrating than putting it on training and watching it slowly creep up over the course of... You know two full character levels. It's worth it, though. Deflect Missiles is... Shy of Haste, the best utility-slash-defensive spell in the game. In my personal opinion. that uh, you, you are certainly welcome to defer in your own opinion slash experience. I, I, I just tend to... I, I suppose it's partly because I tend to play... Um, these sort of bruisery type characters that, that enjoy being close to the enemy and generally requiring some way to close the distance. And I, I just, I like being basically immune to ranged attacks. I mean, we're, we're, we're not immune, of course, but we we're never in lethal danger from ranged attacks alone. Uh, that, that's that's a sort of an overly broad statement, but I don't think it's an unreasonable one. I mean, if we deflect 30% of the missiles that come in and our shield blocks, you know, let's say 20%. I mean, that's, that's a coin flip right there. Okay, uh, that's, I believe, enough for now. I will return to our stash. Oh, hi, Fire Giant. Taste some lightning. Ooh, we can actually, uh, if we do this right, we can use these walls of green... Oh, it's a bolt of fire, never mind. I was about to say we can use these walls of green crystal to reflect a bolt of fire and get a multi-zap off of it, which is very strong. Um... Multi-zap is, well, it used to be a much stronger effect. Uh, used to be able to get up to four zaps from the same spell. Maybe you still can, and I'm just doing it wrong, or maybe it doesn't work with shock, and it only works with lightning, I don't know. But uh, at the very least, you get two hits with the same spell if you bounce it off a wall. This generally only works with the spells shock and shatter. Uh... Or not Shatter, um, Shock and, and Lightning Bolt. And, you know, Wands of Lightning. Um, oh, right, we're going back to our stash. I don't know, I'm just wandering around aimlessly. Um, but Green Crystal Walls are have an odd property, which is that... Oh, 
come find us, Titan. Titans are strong, but one by itself isn't going to do anything to us. Uh, green crystal walls have the odd property of reflecting bolts of fire and cold as well. So when you find yourself in a in an area with a lot of green crystal walls, first be careful you don't you know bolt yourself in the face. But secondly, you can do some cool stuff with bouncing it off the walls to get two hits when normally it would only be one. Um, you always want to do that with lightning and shock if you can. Positioning is very important for an air mage. Uh, at least until you move beyond those offensive spells. Like, you, you use shock in the early game, and then there's a little bit of a gap where you... Uh, let's drop a couple of these scrolls to identify at least. Um, there's a little gap between there and Lightning Bolt, because Lightning Bolt is level 5, I think. But then once you get Lightning Bolt, you use that for a really long time. Uh, and so you, you have to be very good at, at multi-zapping. There's, uh, there's a handy little guide on the crawl wiki. With uh, with some helpful diagrams and whatnot, little ASCII diagrams. This game uh, is is playable in an ASCII. Uh, by the way, this is the the substantive end of the video. Uh, thank you for watching. This is just you know we're entering um, stash ramble time. Uh, oh, and I, I meant to mention this in the past few videos and just completely forgotten. Uh, if you ever want to find me online, um, I play some other games. I play League of Legends occasionally, although I won't be until I take the bar exam. That's just something I don't have time for, particularly. Uh, but I play some League of Legends. I play um, some Civilization and other games here and there. And I, I usually use the username Dr. McMean. Uh, so if you ever see me, uh, that's uh, Dr. D-R-M-C-M-E-E-N. Uh, middle name, and I, I'm not a medical doctor, but, you know, jurist doctor counts, I guess, sort of. It's enough for an online handle. Uh, I'll, I'll go with that. We're, it, we all live in a fantasy world, and uh, in a world where I'm smart enough to actually be a medical doctor, that's, uh, that's where I live. Anyway, um... I sort of lost my train of thought there. Oh yeah, multi zeps are nice. So green crystal walls, bolts of fire, we can make use of them. They're not too terribly common, but uh, when they do pop up, it's good to remember that we can do that. Slash, good to know that we should not just fire bolts around willy-nilly. You can use... Um, uh, you can use the, the period key to fire to a specific location and not further, even with a bolt effect. So if we, you know, if there's a monster standing there, say, and we have an ally there, and we want to make sure the bolt doesn't go through and hurt our ally and turn him against us, just when you're about to target, when you're targeting like this, instead of pressing enter or return or whatever key you have set up as your affirmation, press period instead, and it will... Uh, it will target that space and no further. It will still go through things to hit that space, obviously, but it will not uh, proceed beyond. Okay, things we need to do in our stash. We are low on scroll resources, though we have a surprisingly large number of magic mapping scrolls. Four on the ground, two in our inventory, six total. That I'm not used to having quite that many. Um, yeah, that's right. We're saving our enchantment scrolls for a cool evening star. If we find, for example, an evening star of vampirism, I think that's, that's probably the, oh, well, no, that's not the best case scenario for the extended endgame, certainly. If you, if you use a weapon of vampirism on a demon or an undead, I don't know for sure about undead, definitely demons, um, you suffer some pretty nasty torment effects, pain effects. Uh, because you're trying to drain life force out of something either not alive or super chaotic and not very compatible with your life force. Uh, trying to think of brands that would be good 
on an evening star. I guess freezing would be fine. An evening star freezing would be um, reasonably usable. We're not going to wear this ring of magical power. Those other rings, it's possible that we'll use them at some point. We will never be using this wand of draining. It's not a powerful enough effect at this point to be useful to us. We have better spells, etc., etc. The Wand of Lightning I'm keeping just because it, in addition to doing some little pepper damage here and there, like to those ogres, just, you know, for funsies, it's also loud enough that it attracts other things nearby. So if we find a nice choke point, we can blast a couple of things with lightning and everything will march towards us. Or at least that's the plan. Um, let's just eat this pear. I, the past few games that I've played, uh, sort of through the end game, extended end game, I've ended up with just mountains of perma food. Far, far more than I've actually needed. You know, something like 25 bread rations and nearly as many meat rations. So I'm being more liberal with it this time, especially since the route we're taking involves casting a lot of spells with high hunger costs. I mean, all of our level 6 spells still have two pips of hunger, which is, I mean, it's not, it, it, it's clearly not prohibitive. And as long as we're actively killing stuff, we can generally feed ourselves. Um, but these, these fruits and bacon and cheese and, I don't know, all that junk. Um, instead of trying to haul it around in our inventory, taking up a bunch of spots, giving us a big hassle, and then we have to eat it anyway to make room for stuff we want to pick up, I'm just sort of snacking on them while we're here in the stash if we start to get hungry. Just so that, you know, if I... Um, if I forget to prepare, you know, I switch armor, take off our armor for some silly reason, and then run down into the vaults and whatnot. At the very least, I will have spells available to me. I will not be too hungry to cast spells, at the very least. That's a highly unlikely scenario, but eh, might as well eliminate a variable when you can. And I clearly have not needed all the food that I've been saving in past runs. Uh, the, there are other crawlers that I've watched that are... Um, a lot more generous with their eating habits. They'll, you know, just snack on permafood and not bother with butchering corpses and whatnot. And that's a perfectly viable way to play the game. I, if if you want a little bit less micromanagement, um, or if you are worshiping a god that really likes sacrifices, like um, Trog or Okawaru, or uh, I think Mokleb accepts blood sacrifice. Pretty sure. Um, those may be it, although I'm probably missing some. Uh, if you're worshipping one of those gods, there, there are some things like, uh, I mean, e even just having all of the bodies available for sacrifice is nice, so, you know, that's a reason why you might want to eat permafood. Um, if you want to, it's certainly possible to memorize, like, one spell at a time, or just a couple spells at a time, and only train spell schools and just never train spell casting. And so you'll have really high hunger costs for everything, but you'll be able to cast... You'll have a lot, you know, a, a reasonably high spell power in that, you know, one area of magic that you choose to focus. Um, so if you're, you know, kind of a bruisery brawler and you just want to be able to cast repel missiles or something, and so, you know, you don't really care about the hunger costs because you're only casting every once in a while. You know, you can snack on from it there... Or if you get a bunch of wizardry effects and you want to cast spells that are far beyond your normal capabilities. Um, yeah, there, there, there are plenty of reasons to eat permafood. Uh, I just tend to hoard my resources when I can. Sometimes to a fault. You know, I really don't think we're ever going to put on this cloak of preservation. I, I really like the effect, but I'm just just so sick of it. I, I'm, I'm really ready for... Uh, well, and, and the other reason is that uh, scrolls and potions are approaching the point where they're not particularly useful to us. 
or rather all of the useful ones to us are going to be back here. You know, things like amnesia, um, re remove curse, I guess, is kind of useful. Uh, but recharging, um, identify, that sort of thing. I guess... I guess blinking scrolls are, are the thing that we would want the most. But we can even cast blink now, so they're not as vital as they are to a, uh, a non-caster. There's, no, um, there's no reusable or rechargeable source of blinking uh, outside of the spell. And, uh, it, you know, it is, scrolls of blinking are, are obviously consumable. The, the nice thing about Scrolls of Blinking over the spell is that it only takes one turn, no matter what, and it's a controlled blink. When we cast the spell blink, uh, what is it? Let's, hmm, let's make it B, just so I remember to use it more often. We'll switch with Petrify. I haven't used Petrify in a month anyway. It's, we're beyond the point where, uh, Things have low enough magic resistance that they can be petrified, generally. It's it's usually not worth the four mana that it takes, especially since we don't have it at max spell power. Although it's pretty close. It's very close. Handful, maybe three more levels of earth magic and it would be max power. Something like that. But yeah, it's just most stuff is going to resist it, and it, it our, our mana is better spent. I mean, that's, that's two-thirds of an iron shot which is generally going to be... I mean, a thing can't hurt us if it's dead. And that's basically the point of petrifying something, is to prevent it from attacking us until we can bash it down. Um, yeah, and so we, we do have... Technically, we do have access to a reusable control blink in that we can wield our ring of teleport control and evoke it and then blink. And it's a even, but even then, it's a semi-controlled blink. It's not guaranteed to take you to exactly the tile you specify. It just gets you in the the pretty close vicinity. Uh, there is a control teleport spell that I don't believe we have access to. It's level six or seven. Mm, doesn't look like it. If we find it, we may memorize it. Control teleport is a powerful effect. A very strong effect, especially when used in conjunction with actual teleport instead of just blink. I mean, it's nice to have with blink, certainly. But with actual teleport, you can do crazy stuff like teleport next to a rune, snag it with apportation, and teleport out of there. Uh, wild and crazy stuff like that. But uh, that's also very risky. It, it, it is useful, though, it, uh, for example, a less hazardous situation, a less foolhardy situation, let's say. Um, if you are in a rough spot like we were with Zatawa and Menace and the um, those other guys, the Yaktar and the Convoker and the Warden and all those dudes, uh, you can just you can control a teleport and teleport back to the room with the staircase that you descended and you'll at least get in that room and, well, you, you may not guarantee get in the room, but you will at the very least teleport back somewhere where you've already cleared instead of just kind of risking teleporting somewhere willy-nilly. So if we had more Scrolls of Amnesia, one thing that I would do, and I, I promise I'm almost done with this video, I won't make you sit here too much longer. Um, I'm, I'm just about out of things to say and I need to get back to studying regardless. Study a little bit more before bed. Um, if I had more Scrolls of Amnesia, or if I were following Sif Muna and could forget spells at will, I would memorize Spider Form and just see how it works with Chabriados as a gargoyle. It, it Your movement penalty, your halved movement speed, still applies in Spider Form, but Spider Form is faster than normal. I think it moves at 0.6 or 0.7 turns per tile. Uh, so in theory, that would be, you know, 1.2, 1.4 turns-ish. So it would be somewhat faster than our current speed, which is glacial. 
Um, the, the reason why I'm not sure of this is because the only other time that I can think of that I have had memorized spider form on a character that worshipped Chabritos was as a Naga, who move at base 1.4, naturally. They're slower than normal anyway. It's why they get some cool benefits, like being able to spit poison and getting an additional 20% hit points. They make they make really fun, uh, bashy, bruisery types. The, the other reason why Nagas are, are fun, bashy, bruisery types is because their large torso size allows them to wield shields with greater proficiency. You only need three levels to wield a buckler, eight levels to wield a regular shield, and I think 12 or 15, probably 15, to wield a large shield without any spellcasting or melee penalties. Um, shields always contain, anytime you wear a shield, ever, uh, it contains a penalty to your evasion and unarmed combat which is reduced by shield skill, but never eliminated. It's a little bit worse for unarmed combat, though very frequently worth the cost. Um, with unarmed combat, it increases your attack delay by a small amount, sometimes. It's not guaranteed, and it's not a huge penalty if you have sufficient shield skill. But it's still there, and it can mess with your combat math a little bit. Assuming that you are, uh, I don't know, relying heavily on having min delay unarmed combat, which is a thing. I mean, uh, at, at max level, unarmed combat has a 0.5 attack delay, so you get two attacks per turn. And that's that's a nice round number. It's, it's very easy to predict enemy movements, enemy attacks, etc. When you have... You know, exactly two attacks per turn. But the defensive capabilities of shield are generally worth it for melee combatants in general, unless you want to go the two-handed route. That's a perfectly viable option in several scenarios. One, if you are just wanting to crush down everything, you don't care about defense, you just want to bash your way through stuff. And, and that works really well for uh, Berserkers. I I would never go shields with a Berserker or, you know, a worshiper of Trog in general, someone who relies on the Berserk ability to um, for for their, their combat damage. Berserking is, is a really interesting effect, and the, and the reason why you haven't seen me use it basically ever is because it's a lot trickier to manage than uh, than other effects. There's a lot more um, RNG, random number generator, iffiness involved. The uh, follower, uh, followers of Trog, that source of berserking is much more reliable, so I do recommend that uh, if you choose to... to go a berserky type route. It is kind of nice to have a source. I mean, you can't use it in conjunction with Chabritos. He won't let you berserk. Um, except accidentally. But uh, it is a neat effect. Ups your damage a lot, gives you temporary hit points, um, and increases your speed, your attack speed. I don't believe it increases your movement speed, however, so be careful there. Anyway, that, that's that's enough of me just talking your ear off. Thanks for watching. I I, uh, I always appreciate people who stick around to the end of the video. Not that there's anything wrong with stopping when I'm done actually playing the game. I'm just chatting about game mechanics. Uh, but, you know, I, I like to think that I'm at least uh, helping some of you crawl more consistently, and uh, you too can ascend with the Orb of Zod. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.